Hi everyone, Stacy Weider here on behalf of Campus Mortgage with a quick video for you on the Ability to Repay and Qualified Mortgage Refresher Part 1. Now just a quick reminder before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only and should not be considered legal advice or used in place of Fannie Mae guidelines. Also, this video was created on March 6, 2017 and the information contained in this video is subject to change without notice. So let's take a look at the ability to repay rule. This rule is part of Regulation Z, also known as the Truth in Lending or TIL rule, and requires each lender to obtain and verify documentation showing the borrower can afford to repay the mortgage. Failure on the lender's part to validate the borrower's ability to repay could result in civil money penalties and additional fees. Now this rule came about with the Dodd-Frank Act and was uh, very soon after the mortgage meltdown of 2008. And really what it does is it helps to protect the lender if they underwrite a loan based on the ability to repay guidelines um, and follow those guidelines then they're not going to be held responsible um, or be able to be sued by the borrower should the borrower go into foreclosure or default on the loan. Now the ability to pay transactions, so here are the loans that are um, available under the ATR rule. And they apply to consumer closed end loans secured by a dwelling, a purchase or a refinance, first and second mortgages. Now that excludes home equity lines of credits because a home equity line of credit is not a closed in mortgage. Um, it also applies to a maximum of a 40 year loan term, fixed rate for the first five years, standard amortization loans, and loans without negative, negative amortization or balloon payments. Now, how do you evaluate the ability to repay? So how does an underwriter or a lender evaluate that a borrower has the ability to repay? Well, the point of this is not to impose minimum underwriting standards upon the lender. So there's no minimum set by the ATR rule for borrower income, assets, or credit scores. The rule is not, the goal of the rule is not to force restrictions on lenders. Instead, the goal of the ATR rule is to ensure that all lenders are using the same benchmark standards that are fair and responsible to determine the borrower's ability to repay. So now let's take a look at the eight factors that lenders and underwriters have to take into consideration when they're underwriting a loan that falls under the ATR rules. So let's take a look at these eight factors. So factor number one, um, they have to review the current or reasonably expected income or assets of the borrower. So does the borrower have the income and the assets to support uh, the payments on this mortgage? Now, when it comes to assets, that cannot include the subject property um, as an asset. Next is current employment status. Do they meet the standards of um, whatever program they're doing's employment status? Are they reasonably employed? Does it look like their employment is going to continue in the future? Is it stable? Next is monthly payment on covered transaction. So this is calculated by assuming the loan will be repaid in substantially equal monthly payments during its standard term. Um, if the loan is an ARM loan, the monthly payment has to be calculated using the fully indexed rate, meaning the rate when the loan is recast or reset to the non-promotional rate. So this is determined at the time of closing or the introductory rate, whichever is higher. Now there's special rules that apply for balloon interest only and negative AM loans, but most lenders do not do those. So that's what they have to take into account when they're looking at the monthly payment on the covered transaction. Now, the next factor that a lender must consider is the monthly payment on a simultaneous loan. 
So if at the time of closing the lender is aware that the borrower has an additional um, home equity line of credit or second mortgage secured by the same dwelling, they need to consider whether or not the consumer has the reasonable ability to make the combined payments of all the loans including. That includes taxes, insurance, any additional assessments. So that's an important factor as well. Next is monthly payment for mortgage related obligations. So they need to take into account um, taxes, insurance premiums, co condo homeowners association dues, assessments, fees, or any similar recurring charges. Those need to be factored into the monthly obligations to determine whether or not the borrower has the ability to repay. Next is current debt obligations, and that's pretty straightforward. What type of monthly debt obligations do, does the borrower have? And that should include alimony and child support payments. So very important factor there. Next is debt to total monthly income or residual income. So what this is, is this is defined as the amount of monthly income remaining after subtracting monthly debt obligations. Now compensa compensating factors may be considered here and flexibility is expressly permitted by the lender. So um, the key is, is they, wanna, they want to incorporate in the total monthly income or residual income. And then finally is credit history. Now remember, the ATR rule does not impose any type of minimum credit score um, or credit history for lenders, but the credit history does need to be taken into account, of course, and certainly they can consider non-traditional credit references, but they just need to make sure that all of these are documented in accordance with the guidelines. So those are the eight factors that lenders must considering when underwriting a loan to meet the ability to repay rule. All right, everyone, well, that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips and videos, please visit campusmortgage.org and look for our weekly mortgage tips and videos designed for all mortgage professionals, including underwriters, loan officers, closers, processors, and post-closers. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.